successfully annihilate them. There you go. We'll see you next week right here on NBA Inside Stuff. So long, everybody. Absolutely. Dream. You can back him down. Oh, wait, wait, wait. ESPN, the Total Sports Network, presents the youth of America doing their best. This is SSA. SSA is brought to you by Coca-Cola Classic. Always the real thing, always Coca-Cola. And by McDonald's. Have you had your break today? That is the Superdome, which means we must be in New Orleans. And I'm Dan Debenham, which means this must be Scholastic Sports America. Hello, everybody. We are in New Orleans working on an upcoming story for SSA, but we begin this week in upstate New York. That's where Deb Kaufman has a terrific story on one of the country's best lacrosse teams. Next year, I'm going to play lacrosse at Maryland. I'm going to Virginia. I'm going to North Carolina. It's the payoff for playing lacrosse at West Genesee, a college scholarship. Hello, I'm Dove Kaufman, and welcome to Camillus, New York, just outside of Syracuse, where springtime means lacrosse. And at West Genesee, expectations are high. They've won eight out of the last 14 New York State championships. And every time they take the field, they carry with them the reputation as one of the best high school teams in the country. It's like playing the Chicago Bulls. Everybody gets up for it, you know? Where are you from, West Genesee? They're like, oh, West Genesee. Straight up defense, nothing fancy. Kind of on a run and gun style. Many of the names are new this year, but what's asked of them is always the same. If you're going to play Wildcat Lacrosse, be prepared to work. Four-hour practices are the norm. It's been called a dynasty at West Tennessee, and another state title in 95 is not just a goal, it's expected. Undefeated is like the only way that you can actually be satisfied. If you lose a game, then it's like basically your whole season seems ruined. Why is West Tennessee so good year after year? Repetition. Um, pride of excellence. The kids put all their time into lacrosse and they get what they put into it out of it. The minute I do this, now your stick should come over automatically. Come right over. If I try to split, you gotta come that way. Okay, you got a guy split. Now, even though I've got my butt hand here, as I'm going through, now it's come right over. There it is, it's done. We have a strong uh, feeder program that I started before I even came here as a varsity coach. Uh, when I was seven years old, I got the first stick for my birthday. I was about four or five, actually. My father picked me up a plastic stick. We start with the young little kids, and we teach them starting at nine, ten years old. The first year, I think we had 13 kids, ages uh, eight to 13. And then through the years, as it's gone on, we're up to like 450 kids, ages 8 to, eight to 15. Our coach has been here for, I think, 19 years now, and he's only had 20 losses. So, I mean, whatever he's doing, he's doing it right. We've had, I don't know, 50-something All-Americans at the college. I've been to a lot of them, four and three-time All-Americans. Last year's NCAA title game between Princeton and Virginia featured two West Jenny grads at their finest. Princeton All-American Scott Reinhardt and Scott Conklin scored seven of the Tigers' nine goals en route to the national championship. College coaches know that the people from West NC can play. They know that they can think the game. Other schools, they get the good athletes. Those people, some of them don't really know how to think the game. West NC kids know. There are 15 seniors on this year's team. All are planning to play lacrosse at the next level. While some will be going away to college, if history is any guide, some of them won't have too far to travel. The Carrier Dome, home to perennial national power Syracuse, is just 10 miles up the road. And over the years, a virtual pipeline has been established between the two schools. I know uh, what I'm getting because I've had so many uh, through the years. And, uh, the entire 25 years of my tenure as head coach, I've had West Tennessee kids probably every year. And some years I had three, four, and even more. Coach Masser worked on a lot was the fundamentals. In preparing every day, we worked on fundamentals. And I think that helps so much when you get here because if you get the fundamentals down when you get here, you're just going to get better and better. Yeah, they grow up as little kids watching Syracuse play, so they, a lot of them have this, you know, idea that that's where they want to go. And, you know, they do. And they, Syracuse kind of you know, here and there plucks out some of our best players. I don't get them all every year, and I'm not expected to, but uh, 
Um, we always feel more comfortable with uh, West Tennessee kids. You know it's going to be a good game. You know it's going to be a clean game. You know, you don't have to worry about cheap shots. Their kids don't do that stuff. If we can go out and schedule, you know, patchy teams, that doesn't help us. You know, the kids get better when they play West Jenny. We love them. a good game for the Wildcats, but just winning is not always enough at West Genesee. Despite the 11-0 shutout, Coach saw some flaws and let the boys know it. It was really slack. It's really disappointing to see a play like that. You got a lot more going for you than that. I'd be embarrassed. The setback West Genesee will cost about 25 years with that display. We'll deal with it tomorrow. A lot of people don't understand inconsistency. Um, the team like we played yesterday, everybody should have been playing very well. And it seemed like there was a bit of a drop off, and then we peaked at some times, and then we drop off again. Consistency is what we have to key in on. Jenny Lacrosse was not set back 25 years, but it did earn the guys a six hour practice the next day. One thing we learned you play by coaches' rules, or you don't play at all. We have a contract here that we signed when. You know, we sign up for lacrosse, to play lacrosse. And it's just a contract basically that says that there's, you know, you're not allowed to drink, you're not allowed to smoke. So no parties where there's alcohol, no smoking, no, no going out, no having any fun in at 9 o'clock. Right, right. And that's okay with you guys? Yeah. yeah. Nobody complains. The, the boy comes here, he's uh, well-focused, well-disciplined. He knows how to make sacrifices. Uh, he's coachable. Uh, if he wasn't all of those things, he wouldn't survive West Tennessee. The kids here, they, they work hard, they expect a lot out of it. That way, it's a lot of fun for everybody else. It's not, it's not that it's just a cool thing, it's just that the kids love to play. One, two, three, yeah! Go, get up, go, get up. Let's go, quick. Hey, thanks a lot, Deb. And, oh, by the way, if she looks familiar to you, that's because you've seen her on all of our ESPN2 things that she does. That's right, the deuce, baby. Thanks again, Deb. Hey, stick around. we got plenty more of SSA. We're just getting started here in New Orleans. We'll be back right after this. But not at Jacobs Field in Cleveland, where the Indians fans have a new park. Like number 42. Ron Cornfield on the campus of Syracuse University. Time Warner Cable 13 Sports presents the game of the week. Tonight, the New York State Class A Boys High School Lacrosse Championship game from Section 11, the Sachem Flaming Arrow. Time Warner Cable 13 Sports presents the game of the week. Tonight, the New York State Class A Boys High School Lacrosse Championship game from Section 11, the Sachem Flaming Arrows take on the West Genesee Wildcats. Oh, hi again, everybody. Welcome to Cornfield on the campus of Syracuse University. This is Dave Ryan, my broadcast partner. Once again, Joe Inzel alongside Joe, the game everyone has been waiting for, the Class A State Championship. Jenny and Sachem, this is a matchup, really a dream game you've all been looking forward to. We've got 40 wins at least between these two teams. This is the holy grail of high school across two dynamite programs with a lot of offense, strong defense. It'll be a dream. These teams got to be a little bit tired. Fatigue could be a factor. The fourth time they played in eight days. Let's look to see, first of all, how the number two seed, Sachem, got this far. The Flaming Arrows coming out of Section 11 downstate, doing very well this season, coming in with a record of 20 and 1. And, of course, they are ranked number two in New York State. So far, beat Ward Melville in a sectional game, then Port Jefferson, an intersectional ball game, and the downstate championship. They beat Mayhoe back, another uh, downstate 
traditional power 11-5. Number two in the state, as you see, they won the state championship back in 1993, taking care of a local squad here, the FM Hornets. Meanwhile, West Genesee coming in. They've got the undefeated record and a long win streak on the line. Joe, what a team, what tradition, 21-0. They beat CNS here at Cornfield last week, 5-4, a very close game. Vestal in her sectional game here at Cornfield by 12 goals on the road at Rochester over the Webster Warriors, 10-9. They're number one in the state. 45-game win streak on the line. State championships, 94, 91, and 1990. Can Mike Masser's team do it again? He has not seen Sachin play this year. On paper, it looks like a good matchup of speed. It does look like a good matchup of speed, and even though they've got powerful offenses, my key to the game is going to be the defense, and I think you're going to have to look at the goaltenders. Got an All-American in the cage for Sachin, and we're going to have to have both good goaltending on both teams. West Genesee's got to be very elated, really relieved to be have, playing basically a home game in their backyard here at Coin Field. Oh, yeah, the road to this championship game has not been without speed bumps. That game against Webster was a little knock that West Genesee didn't really want to have, so they're really up for this one. We are looking forward to it. Our pregame show continues here from Cornfield. Rick Mercurio, head coach of the Sachem Flying Marrows, coming up right after these words. Stay with us. Haven't had a chance to, to look at you guys yet. Well, we're in a very competitive league. As you know, Wood Melville's right in our league. Most people in the state are worried about getting out of their own county and perhaps their section to play. We have to worry about getting out of our own league and then taking a Long Island championship with the Nassau County teams being as strong as they are. It's very difficult. Uh, four games in seven days, making a six, ha six and a half hour trip. It's a long road to get here, and when the kids are here, they're excited to play. Now, how about that bus ride? You had a long ride all the way from uh, Long Island through New York City, then into upstate, while West Genesee just had to basically sleep in their own beds and make a 10-minute drive from Camillus here to Coin Field. Is that a big disadvantage for you guys? I don't believe so. I think when you get to this point, the motion will take over. These are young kids. They're 17 years old. They're conditioned. They're excited to play. They have plenty of time to sleep after today's game. <laughs> you got a lot of weapons. Let's talk about your key players and Rich Degenfelder, your goalie. He's an All-American. Yes, Rich Degenfelder has uh, done an outstanding job for us. Uh, most people don't know two years ago in our program, he was an attackman. Uh, he has great hands. He's very competitive. He's very quick. Uh, we converted him over to a goalie last year. He made All-County in our league and uh, Rookie of the Year. He's come a long way. Uh, he's got an excellent outlet pass, and uh, hopefully he can have a great game. On midfield, face-off specialist and Larry Collins. Yeah, Larry Collins is uh, he's a throwback to the good old boys. He's a West Point kid. Uh, we wish him the best. He's a, he's a quarterback on a football team and uh, plays basketball, so he's a heady kind of kid out on the field. And, uh, pretty much conducts business out there the way he does in his other athletic adventures. Uh, we're looking for big things for Larry. Coach, a minute ago, Joe Enzel and I, the pregame show, were talking about a fast-paced game. Is that what you expect today, and what are the keys to beating a great team like West Genesee? Well, West Genesee, we have a, a whole lot of respect for their program. They have outstanding sticks. Uh, they're smart players. We rate, we rate teams as far as lacrosse, not only their ability, we rate them as far as their lacrosse uh, sense on the field. And one through five, we rate them a five-plus. Uh, so, uh, we just hope that we can continue to beat people on our speed. You know, it's hard to tell. We don't see teams uh, all that often. Uh, we have a very fast team, and uh, hopefully we're fast. Coach Rick Mercurio, thanks for joining us very much. Good luck today, Sachin. Thanks for having us up here. Okay, good to see you again. All right, Joe Angel is joined in a couple of moments by Mike Massera, head coach of West Genesee. Our pregame show from Point Field rolls on right after these words. Yeah, it's been a good year. We've uh, worked really hard. You know, we've had some close calls coming up through the line and uh, you know, some good games, but we've hung in there. We talked early on in our broadcast about the fact that you play four games in eight days with this one. You've got to keep the teams fit and focused. That must be a challenge. Yeah, it's got to start from the beginning of the season, and it's difficult at this time. You've got to just hope you don't get any injuries because there's not any time to recuperate. Your assessment of how you match up against Sachem today? Well, I, they probably have a little more depth than we have, but, uh, you know, and probably the size and everything, but, uh, you know, we've been facing that all year long. We've been, you know, got, been mismatched physically, but we've, we've uh, played well and played smart, and that's helped us a lot. Let's talk about the senior leadership that's gotten you this far, too. You've got two captains that we're going to feature today as key players. Talk about Mike Leahy first. Oh, Mike's been just a great kid. Uh, he's an all-around good athlete. Now he's our high school All-American this year. Uh, he just he leads uh, not only uh, you know out on there on the field with his uh, play, but also you know behind the scenes in the locker room and on the field uh, you know on the sidelines and so forth. He's just he's been really important. He 
Doesn't score a ton of goals, but he'll get that one or two and make the plays at the times when you really need him. That's the story on number six. Now, number seven, Harry Sackrin, your defenseman. Yeah, Harry's been with us three years, and he's been playing on the Empire Games in a couple of years. Uh, he's just been outstanding also. He's had a lot of experience, and, uh, you know, He's been uh, a strong leader also, just as Mike has. Coach Mike Massera, thanks for joining us. Hoping to keep the state title upstate where it belongs. We'll be back with the opening face-off of this one. Don't go away. Number 424-9393. We are just about set for exciting Class A state championship lacrosse from a jam-packed coin field. The attendance just fantastic between the four schools being represented here today. It's championship day on the SU Hill. Let's check out the officials for a championship game between West Genesee and Sachem High from Section 11. Tom Beck, Len Winsky, Joe Mars, and Peter Burkhardt will be calling the action this afternoon. Starting lineups, first for the Flaming Arrows, ranked number two in New York State, coming in with a 20-1 and one record under their head coach in his 10th year, Rick Mercurio. Chris Hornet on attack. He is their number one gun in offense, scored 38 goals this year. Will Campbell, Chris Amplo, one of two Amplo twins on this team. The midfield, Eric Ragon, Luis Gonzalez, and Larry Collins. Also, David Kramer is going to see time in the midfield on faceoff. Defense, a great defensive unit. Mike Luce, Doug Longo, Wes Honsetter, and the goalie, Rich Dagenfelder. He is a player to watch, an All-American, heading to University of Maryland, Baltimore County, next season. There are the Sachem Flaming Arrows coming in with 10 straight wins. And meanwhile, West Genesee, we know all about their long win streak, 21 in a row, looking for 46 straight victories. On attack, Jerusso, McCall, and Bibi. The midfield, Mike Leahy, who ha does have an injury from the victory earlier this week against Webster in the intersectional game. Ben Duncan, Aaron Vecchio on midfield. On defense, All-Americans all the way around. Harvey Sacrin, Tom Pringle, and Ryan Flanagan. Dan Matheson, their goalie, had nine saves in the victory over the Webster Warriors at the University of Rochester on Thursday night. Talking a bit about fatigue in West Genesee, Joe Inzel. His team has played again four games, eight days, and there's Mike Leahy being introduced, number six. He's got an injured left calf. A couple of players are beaten up. A very physical game Thursday against Webster. Well, Webster got off to the, came out of the gun really hard. Four to one at the end of the first period. Webster was leading. West Genie didn't get into their actual game until the second half. And most people on the field agreed with that assessment. They felt that they had to come back. It was a position they hadn't been in often. It was an unfamiliar position, but they sucked it up, had a lot of character, and they turned it up a notch, and they pulled that game out 10-9. Now, Last year, when West Genesee went down to Kingston in Ulster County and won the 1994 state championship, as a kind of tradition, right before that game, they all shaved their heads. Now, this year, Joe Enzel, a little bit different in terms of the look. You and I will not do this. <laughs> Each player has his own individual do, as opposed to a normal mohawk or just a straight shave. Looks like Mr. Goodwrench did some of these. And I'll tell you, some of these are highly creative. So they win honors, certainly, for creativity and the haircuts this year. It's only for the championship game. It didn't happen at all for the intersectional game, sectional final, or the upstate championship on Thursday at the U of R. As you'll get all the way to the end, if we can see, possibly, there's Harvey Sacrin. And keep going a little bit further. Look look at that. The Paul Prince That's on Eric number 12. Eric McCall. E.J. McCall has got a West Tennessee Wildcat Paul print on his head. You imagine the dates of these guys if the prom <laughs> was tomorrow? I think they'd be a little bit embarrassed. Hats for everyone. Yeah. That's where the yeah. helmets are right. on the field. There's oh, yeah. head coach Mike Masser, 20th season, a Hall of Famer. Talk about a tremendous overall record as the two coaches shake hands. 4, 11, and 20. He is looking for his ninth state championship at West Genesee since 1981. What a tradition. Oh, yeah. It's 411 and 20. For those who think you had 20 ties, certainly not in the game of lacrosse. No, I mean 4, 11, and 20. Indeed. And we've got a dandy coming up here. You know, the humidity is up a notch, though, Dave. And that might be uh, a factor. We talked about so many games in so short a time. All playoff intensity. The teams have to really fire it up. And in a playoff environment, it's going to take a lot out of these young guys. But they can do it. Joe Angel, these teams have met once before and only once. The 1979 state semifinals right here, ironically, at Corn Field. The Arrows won it 6-5 to five on the way to one of their two state titles. As we know, Jenny has won eight state championships, including last year down in Kingston, New York. 
And now going for the 1995 state championship. Can Jenny do it again? They've come off a bunch of one-goal victories, including Thursday against Webster 10-9. While Sachem really has rolled through their playoffs, pretty much no troubles at all. Sachem really has it had it their own way. They beat Ward and Melville 9-5 for the sectional title, and then they beat Mayapec pretty handily. 11-5 to get up here. They were ahead 10-0 at halftime. That was not even a game, really. David Kramer faces off at midfield with Aaron Vecchio, and the 1995 Class A championship game is underway. There's Mike Leahy running the ball down. Obviously, he's okay. That's certainly a concern. Ryan Flanagan with a long stick for Jenny. He is headed for the University of Maryland next year. Very aggressive ride by Sachem. We'll see what kind of defense Sachem can come up with early on on their ride. Jenny known very well for breaking out. Tom Pringle with a long stick. Oh, oh he and floated. A big that. hit early on. Looked like it might have David been David Kramer really hammered Vecchio at midfield. A couple of faceoff specialists colliding big time. And early on, Wesley Hodsetter lost the stick, and the ball possession will go to West Tennessee. Yeah, he was playing the ball without his cross. So Jenny in the offensive zone will try to get going again on Thursday against Webster. The team fell behind, actually 4-1 deficit, which is highly unusual for a Jenny club. They had to come back and didn't even lead Joe until late in the game. They grabbed their first lead. Eric McCall, a great game for West Jenny at four goals. This is Mike Giarusso on attack. Left-handed cradle trying to get West Tennessee up early. Good man defense by Sachem. At Here this is point. McCall backing in. Can't get a shot off. Hit from behind. And it comes right to number 10, Dave Kramer. He'll gain possession on midfield. Up to Hansetter with a long stick. Wesley Hansetter, full head of steam, charges in. Feeds off to Will Campbell on attack. Nice defense, Tom Pringle. And scooped up. Great play made by West Tennessee's defense and Ryan Flanagan. Saccharin, Flanagan, and Pringle on D with a long stick. That pass thrown away, though. He cleared to an area. He cleared to an area, not to a man, and there right. was no one there to pick up the pass. Intensity here at Coin Field High, as you see Rick Mercurio, head coach of Sachem High. Two years ago, won the state championship over FM down at SUNY Cortland. Trying to win again here in 95. It won't be easy. Basically, a road game for his team. A lot of folks have come up from Suffolk County and Long Island to watch the Flaming Arrows in action today, but only a 10, 15 minute drive from Camillus over to Coin Field in the SU Hill, so obviously a definite home field advantage for West Tennessee. Great clear as Will Campbell brings into the offensive end for Sachem. And then promptly throws his pass away as he tried to feed to Eric Ragone on midfield. Dick Mercurio's got to be wondering, we got the ball cleared, and both times we turned it over because our guys looked away when the ball was passed to them. Got to really keep your eye on the ball. Look it into your cross before you make your cuts. Looks like teams a little bit jittery here, Joe, early on. A couple of mistakes, losing sticks, passes going awry. You can imagine it's players may be a bit nervous with so much on the line today. To be expected. Everybody turns it up a notch for a state final. Here's Flanagan in the offensive end with a long stick. He'll pass off to Ben Duncan. Bound for the University of Virginia, Ben Duncan on midfield. Excellent player. He's EJ, EJ McCall and Jared Beebe, 42. Besides their academics, their skills on the field have given these guys access to some phenomenal four-year colleges and two-year schools, and these guys are going to go on to play lacrosse after high school. Let's make sure we get that right. Leahy's going to Virginia, Ben Duncan to North Carolina. Both going to traditional lacrosse powerhouses, and here is Mike Leahy. Doesn't look like he's showing any ill effects of the injury he suffered on Thursday at Palmer Stadium in Rochester. We're running on it for a while, might tighten it up. It's hard to say. It should yeah. loosen it. Here's McCall behind the cage. He has been an offensive weapon for this team. Lost his footing. There's no rain or anything today. Hunt set it all over him, but a nice job by McCall to regain. And the ball comes loose. And Degenfelter able to scoop that one up. He'll dish off to Larry Collins on midfield, and he'll bring it across the midfield line. West Jenny's ride has been a little softer, and the breaks have gone to uh, Sachem in terms of getting the ball over the midline quickly. First time the Jenny defense really has been tested in terms of a possession for Sachem. 6.55 to go in our Class A championship game. First quarter, no score from Coinfield. Chris Amplo, player to watch on attack. Counterclock rotation by the attack on Sachem. They turn it over. Lost possession. Mike Leahy, full head of steam, coming in. Got great speed ahead of the field. Passes to Giarusso in front as they tried to feed McCall. BB there on the backup. Out of bounds, though, and it will turn over to Sachem. It was a nice draw and dump by Leahy, but he, uh, well, the second pass is the one that went awry. Passing and catching, like you said, they're all a little bit nervous. 
Those jitters they appear to be a little bit off the mark on their passes. Not quite as crisp as you'd normally see. In addition to that, you've got some very aggressive defense also fired up and really forcing the passes that they're not making. So we'll see what Sachem can do in there, Claire, what kind of ride defense West Genesee has. A week and a half ago, we saw Jenny play CNS here in this very field sectional final, and we got double. Some great defense there. Nice job, nice, nice job. Nice off on long stick. West Genesee has got it. Giorusso breaking in one on two. He's hammered. Oh, what physical play as Kramer goes right into him and nails him. And now penalty flag drop. We got a hold him. We Wesley got Hansetter hit him as well as Giorusso was just double teamed. And a couple of penalties coming up, Joe. No, I guess they both call the, the same thing. Yep. Okay, technical hold coming up. Take second, a look. Second flag was a little bit late. You're going to take him. Looks like he's really got plowed into, and you're going to think maybe it's an illegal body check from behind or a push. But as we follow the sequence right in here, they got him on the hold. I thought he got hit from behind. Dave Metz, fantastic defensive play at midfield for West Genesee. D midi, long stick. That caused the turnover, and now Genesee a man up. For half a minute. 30 second technical hold call. Those in the crowd who thought it was a minute are making their yeah. opinions known. Duncan to Leahy. Now Jenny on the man up. McCall behind the cage. Cross beating. crease. Cross crease pass. Yes. Vecchio shoots and scores. Aaron Vecchio gets West Genesee on the board. 5.44 to go first quarter. one nothing game. When you have an aggressive defense that presses the ball and covers the ball on the side of the field where the ball is, the attacker shooting player on the opposite side will be what we call backside open. They left him open on the backside. The cross crease pass got to him, and he shots. Nice velocity shot, and he beat the goaltender. And Degenfelder, All-American, is a quality goaltender, but wasn't there for that one. Great look for Aaron Vecchio. Had a good game in the Section 3 title matchup against CNS on this field a week ago Friday. And now Will Matheson will take the faceoff. Normally Vecchio does, but after the goal score, he does not. Jenny trying to get possession. It's off a white cross. Jeff Lasta lost it out of bounds. Fachem has it. Second line midfield on that face-off attempt for West Genesee. Out of bounds, and Sachem will take over now in the offensive zone. Trying to get a really its first shot of the game off so far. They're, they're going to say that possession had not been declared, so the players at your right of your screen are still in the box, and they're going to now release on the whistle. Luis Gonzalez brings into the offensive zone. Here's Will Campbell on attack. Amp Lotus lost it. Yeah, their passes have not been great either. Chris Harnett, team's leading scorer, 38 goals, 32 assists this year. Nice position defense. Fire great defense from West Genesee, but here comes one of the first shots. Matthews in there to make a save. Eric Ragon put it on cage, and no problems at all for goalie Dan Matthewson, the junior, first team all county player. It was he breaks nice. out the other way. Jeff Lasta on midfield. It was a nice save, no question. I'm not taking anything away from that, but that shot was telegraphed. It was a long ways away, and no one was covering the goaltender. He saw it from nice, the beginning nice of the shot. shot by Doug Longo on long stick. And Sachem looks to break out. Nice play defensively. Fitzgerald got a cross on that one. Ball still loose. A lot of ground ball play so far early in this game. Will Campbell able to scoop it up. He'll feed off for Luis Gonzalez on the right side. That shot beyond Matthewson. Good backup by Jenny. And they'll take over. Sacker and Matthewson both there to back it up. Closest to it. And West Genesee has got it. Sidearm shot and it went wide at the cage. If you want to get something a little bit more direct, you go overhand, bounce shot perhaps. But he cranked sideways and it went to the left of the cage. 4.35 to go in our first quarter. You're on Time Warner, Cable 13 Sports, your neighborhood network enjoying a 1-0 West Genesee lead. So far, the Wildcats are. Here's Duncan at the midfield. Watch closely on the play by Kramer. Ben Duncan stopped on his attack. And Leahy top of the box. Dangerous offensive player. Left-handed shot, at least thought about one. He wound up but didn't take it. Being watched by Sopracasa. Eric Sopracasa, long stick. He's All-American, headed for UMass. BB behind the case, throws a pass away, trying to hit McCall. He'll go out of bounds, and Sachem again takes over down one zip. Four minutes straight up to go in our first quarter of play. The rights to this broadcast have been granted by the New York State Public High School Athletic Association, representing 778 senior high schools across the state and more than 500,000 boys and girls who participate annually in the NYSPHSAA, 
sponsored by the athletic competition. Any rebroadcast or republication of this programming without the written consent of the NYS PHSAA is strictly prohibited. 336 first quarter. I could have said that, but it had too many words. <laughs> Gonzalez dishes to Gamble. In the offensive end, Larry Collins. He is a midfielder. He works it back for Eric Ragone, and they will patiently await a shot. We know Sachem likes to run, but so far, Joe, in their offensive end anyway, they haven't been too quick to get shots off. That one ripped up there by number five, Will Campbell, but why? Good play made by Matheson to cut down the angle. Well, the Wildcats started that one because they had to slide over, and they both were sliding a little bit too slowly. He'll come around, you're looking over his shoulder, see how 43 and 6 cut in? They didn't make the adjustment quick enough. He did have a shot, but it went wide. Chris Harden has got Gonzalez on the left wing. Duncan on him on Dean Mitty in this exchange. Gonzalez trying to get a shot off. Good D by Duncan. Can't get one off. Amplo behind the cage. He's watched by Harvey Sacron. Here's Will Campbell in the feeder position. That shot. Matthews in there to make a nice save again. Eric Ragone put it on cage. That's the second time he's been denied. Leahy at the midfield. He'll bring over the midfield stripe. Goes to Giarusso on the left wing. A little softer ride by Sachem allowed Leahy to cross the midfield line and clear the ball quite easily, actually. Despite the fact these teams play four games now in eight days, they don't appear winded or tired. Of course, it may be a factor later on. There is a slight breeze now picking up here at point field, which may help in terms of stamina. But it is hot on the turf, no doubt about that. Giarusso behind the cage. Watched by Hansetter. That's a good matchup to keep an eye on all day long. E.J. McCall backs in. Good move. Left-handed shot. Reese violation called. The turnover goes back to the Flaming Arrows with 2.06 to go in the first quarter of play. His follow-through would take him into the cross. He was hoping that he would score. By that time, it wouldn't have mattered. He had the inside angle. Goaltender cuts right out there. Dingenfelder to shut it off a little bit. But he had a follow-through with his motion, and he stepped through, and that's where he takes the risk of getting a crease violation. Coach Rick Mercurio wanted to shut down West Tennessee's big scores as a key and get into the transition game if they could. I'd say early, Joe, and it is early. They've done at least one of those two things. Transition hasn't been there too much because of great plays like that from Flanagan and Saccharin. There's a third ingredient. He wanted to score off all those incidents and hasn't yet. All right. Harvey Saccharin runs right into his opposite number. Coach Mercurio, hands on hips, looking for his second state title today. Out of two minutes, 147 to go in the first. That was a loose ball push to turn the ball over to the Sachem. Not a lot of high percentage shots so far for either team. Interesting to see it. Both teams like to run and gun, love transition when they can get it, but the defenses at this level, Joe, you know, are so good that they're just not getting good looks so far in the cage. Nice job by West Jenny again to pick up a loose ball and try to take off with it. Sachem has thus far been Stevens. Flat. Mark Stevens picks it up. E.J. McCall fakes a pass. Thought about fishing in. Mike Loose with long stick on him, number two. The official on the near side took a face plant when he got in the middle of traffic. <laughs> it's dangerous out there. There's a push Steve behind. Stevens. No, they're calling him turning. Very physical play again from David Kramer. He has run into a couple of Jenny players big time in this game. Giarusso couldn't get his shot off. Nice defense, a lot of physical play. And look at Degenfelder out of his cage and crease to pick up an aggressive play for him. Joey Mayo on midfield, crosses the midfield line and brings it into the offensive end. And throws it away beyond Amplos' cross. 46 seconds to go, first quarter. Clock is on the field now for the officials, and a big turnover again. Excedrin Hedick, number 46 for Rich McCurio, too. <laughs> They're getting it down there, but turning it over repeatedly. And if we had a turnover stat, per se, that would be interesting to see. West Genesee will try for one more surge here. In the final moments of the first quarter, Leahy got to watch out from behind. Score Chris here. Harned, applying some pressure. Here's Ben Duncan. Score here would be big. Yeah, it really would change the momentum quite a bit. Just one goal so far. Aaron Vecchio has scored to make it a 1 0 Jenny lead in the first quarter. Counting down to 20 seconds. Yeruso backing in. He's got that great height advantage. He's almost six foot four. Hansetter all over him with a launch stick. McCall. E.J. McCall. Just 10 seconds. Try to get a shot off. Poke from behind. They can't find it. BB can't get the handle. Ball still loose. Three seconds left. And that's going to do it for the first quarter. Hansetter has 
pass deflected by Aaron Vecchio from behind, but we're done with 10 minutes of play from Corn Field. First quarter in the books. 1-0, West Genesee leads Sachem. Second quarter action coming up right after this. Want a beer? I'll just have a soda. Come on. Uh, fine, I'll have a wine cooler. What do you think you're doing? Don't you dare tell Mom and Dad about this. Mom, Dad, I gotta talk to you. What's up? Don't be afraid to talk to your parents about alcohol. This message was created for the Clear Minds. Clear messages about alcohol contest. For a free kit to help you talk to your kids about alcohol, call 472-DRUG. A great day for high school lacrosse here at Cornfield on the SU Hill. And you can see the folks from Suffolk County, Section 11, have come up with a pretty good group and following to root on the Sachem Flaming Arrows with a great high school tradition. Joe, I'm not sure if you want to call these guys a high school. Do you know how many people they've got at that school? There are more people over, in that school than are in villages. Over 5100, 5107 is the actual school number for Rick Mercurio. Unbelievable. Quite a selection. Let's take another look at Aaron Vecchio's goal. First quarter, the only score so far of the game. Number 17 on midfield, Joe, the cross-crease pass, a key. Yes, here it comes. Just across here, the backside, the officials don't make the slide fast enough, and that's what I mean about overplaying on the ball side of the field. Team switch ends. Second quarter. Vecchio takes it, along with Sachin's number 10, David Kramer. Oh, nice job by Leahy to finesse that ground ball. Mike Leahy on ground balls. You know, West Genesee, when they go through their workouts, their weight workouts, practices, they've got t-shirts. Leahy puts a shot on. Megan Felder there. Nice play from Beebe to keep it alive. Still loose. On the back of those shirts, Joe, it says ground balls. Something they always emphasize. Stick skills at West Genesee. One of the reasons they're so good year in and year out. St. on offense. They just haven't got anything going. In terms of continuity, transition, have not been able to run so far. David Kramer on midfield. He'll work for Joe Amplo. It's early. Both these teams are got Coming a in, shooting there. Matthewson may have gotten a piece of the shot from David Kramer. And I believe he got a crease violation call. Kramer in the crease. Turnover goes back to West Tennessee. As I started to say, both these teams got a quarter under their belt. The butterflies are pretty much gone. They feel their opponents. As you take a look there, you step right in the crease. The official's right on the spot to make the call. Turns it over, and it's West Jenny ball. Chris Amplo on attack. Right in the face of Matthewson. He'll sprint over down. Get right in front of Ryan Flanagan. Flanagan, number eight, with a long stick. They're giving them about 20 or 30 yards on this clear, then they're bunched up at the midfield line. That's when the ride will take on. Here's Duncan. They break it. Easily, actually. Yeah, David Kramer all over Duncan. That's a good matchup to watch. Leahy on the right side. He's got Joe Amplo on him. Aaron Vecchio scored this game's only goal. On the attack now. DJ McCall on the right side on the wing. Ben Duncan, good move. Double team. Nice Vecchio was open but couldn't pull the trigger. Tried to shoot too quickly. But it comes away to BB who keeps it alive. Nice job to draw the defense and come off to an open man. Jenny taking its time for a deliberate attack. Duncan top of the box. Trying to get by two men. Good stick work. Duncan shoots. Loose ball. Almost got kicked in by Hotsetter. And it's raked in by Degenfeld. Boy, it is. Sachem dodge both there. As Wes Hotsetter, long stick defenseman, almost knocked it in his own cage. Lucky break, Doug Longo. He's headed off for Nassau Community College next year to play his college lax. Clears into the offensive end. Joe Amplo will hand back. Doug Shanahan in, number 15. Second line attack players now playing for Rick Mercurio's squad. Campbell behind the cage. Tom Pringle, nice defense on Will Campbell. Pringle still hacking at him on the end line. It's out of bounds. Jenny's got it. Great defense. Situational substitutions. West Jenny changes up. Get ready for this ride. Change their middies. John Fitzgerald and Jeff Lazda out, number 25 and 14, respectively. And uh, Will Mathewson off and on the right. Will Mathewson, who also 
handle some face-off duties. She did after Vecchio scored the goal in the first quarter. Dan Matthewson passes off for Pringle. Will back to Dan. The Matthewson's play catch. Flanagan far side, long stick. Good pass in the middle, goes for Lazda. They break the press. Jeff Lazda will bring in. They'll see if they'll switch on front line middies or not here. Look it in, John, look it in. John Fitzgerald works for Beebe on the right wing. Beebe's got speed, we know he can score too. Left hand cradle shot, could not quite get it. And it's picked off by Sachem coming the other way. Luis Gonzalez, full head of steam, feeding off. Chris Harned, Chris Harned in, shooting, hit from behind though, but they still get it in. What a shot by Harned. He was being ridden hard on defense by Harvey Sacred and by Flanagan. And Chris Harned somehow, Joe, managed to get the shot off and score it. He, he was able to get it off because the, he had a little bit of position on Harvey. Watch this. He's, I mean, on uh, Ryan. He's got him beat right there. Bounce shot caught just inside the pipe and bounced down. And the official on the goal line said that's a good one. That is a tremendous effort by Harned, who was being hit by Flanagan from behind and literally had no juice to put any power on it. But it took a crazy bounce. I'm not sure if Matthewson wasn't just not expecting a shot there. At any rate, it's tied up. One all. 6.38 of the second quarter. The goal scored by Chris Harnett. And once again, Sachem on the attack. Big save. Nice play made on defense as Joe Amplo tried to get a shot off. Matthewson, and that would be a, probably a crease violation there. Stepped right on the crease line. Turned it over. <laughs> Joe Amplo, co-captain. Sachem not happy about that call at all. Pringle will trigger play in his own defensive zone. Great effort on offense by Harnett a moment ago. And it looks like Joe's going to come down to a shot like that. You know, play just a great individual effort to win because these teams are so evenly matched. Seems so thus far. Ryan Flanagan just lost a little bit of position on that one, though, and had he been a step to the right, the stick side, I think he would have prevented that. But that was just a neat shot. Good individual action, or I mean athletic move. Sacker with a long stick goes right by David Kramer. Sacker, bounce shot, score! Harvey Sacker! How about that? A long stick defensive player gives Jenny a 2-1 lead. The captain says, I'll do it if we have it. If I have a need and I'm over the line, I know I can shoot. Takes it all the way down there. And does that player up the Wildcats? You betcha. Here he comes as we look from behind the cage. No one picks him up until right now. But that long stick, he's got velocity behind that. And the leverage in the long stick allows him to put something on it. Again, a nice shot. Positioned beautifully in front of the goaltender. Bounces up just nice. 2-1 Jenny lead. 5.56 to go. Second quarter. There he is. The co-captain, Harvey Sacron. Bound for UMass. Sachem. Nice job on faceoffs. Able to win that one and bring in as Eric Sopracasa scooped up on long stick, number 43, and then put into the midfield. One of the reasons you have a long stick committee is so he can get that ground ball on the faceoffs. Gonzalez on the left wing. We'll see what kind of momentum that can give West Genesee after seeing a defenseman score. It always gets the crowd psyched up, team all jacked up. Here's Collins, left handed cradle. Larry Collins. 25 goals, 21 assists this year. High score right behind Chris Harnett, who has the goal so far. Gonzalez right side, left-handed shot, underarm play. Good backup, though, by Chris Amplo. Matthewson did not have to make a save. It was a nice look by Gonzalez. He put a nice move on Leahy and beat him flat out and just uh, shot wide at the cage. Chris Amplo triggers play behind the cage. Sacker scored a moment ago watching him. Amplo backing in. Trying to get a shot off. Good D by Sacker. Good front. Goes right through the crease. Came to the cross of Chris Harnett. Couldn't pull the trigger, though. Planning it on him. Chris Watch. Harnett backing in. Inside He's move. got position. Watch him spinning. Nice Steve Flanagan. Top of the box pass. Going to be picked off by Duncan. Great effort by Eric Ragone just to make a stop on that one. And then Sachem pressing defense. They get the ball back, it appears. He said that what Duncan can't believe it. it. And in fact, that's going to be the call. Duncan protesting. Both officials and Mike like Rosier last his hands second. Out. Yeah, Mike Rosier can't believe it. Said it was deflected off the white. And had he known that, he knows he would have come up with that ground ball. Yeah. It was a strange play as Ragone went high up just to get a cross on an errant pass. That hard had tossed him. And Duncan just kind of let it go, but the officials felt he got a piece of it. 
Eric Ragon, shot there from top of the box, not close. Good defense by Jeff Lasta. Sachem still has it in the offensive zone. Gonzalez, he's at the top of the box now trying to get a shot off. We know he's got speed. Passes instead to Amplo on the right side. Sacred on him. Chris Amplo. Number 37. Lou Antinoe is on as well. 51. There he is backing that play up. Again deflected off plate. Jenny fans don't like the call. 4.07 to go. First half. 2-1. West Genesee has the lead. Aaron Vecchio and Harvey Sackern have scored goals so far for the Wildcats. Harnett has scored for the Flaming Arrows. Antinoe. Backing in, Lou Antinoy, look out a shot, bouncing, scores one. Using the body, and he is a big kid. He gets the goal. Defenseman fell down. Antinoy gets it, number 51. And the game is tied to all with four minutes straight up to go in our first half. There you see the defender fell down, can't get over there fast enough. And just like that, he stays on his feet, and Pringle was not able to recover. Pringle falls right here. He steps over Pringle and around, and then Pringle tries to do a stick check and won't do it. Harvey Sackerin slides. The slide isn't fast enough, and we're tied up at two. He just used his big frame to get defensive offensive position on Tom Pringle. Duncan tries it should be to withholding. It, it should have been. No call, though. Made it all on David Kramer. Still no whistle. Out of bounds it goes. One more time, it's called off West Genesee. So Sachem has got possession. Three forty-seven to go. Game tied. Told by some of the press corps who's following Sachem that. You never see a goal scored by number 51 until now. Rarely gets one. But a big score to tie this up. Kramer to Amplo. This is Joe Amplo. Number 42. Top of the cage shot. And Matheson in there to stop it off to Leahy. Mike Leahy in the offensive zone. BB has got some space. Here's McCall now with it. Back cross off. feeds, and Leahy was open. I tell you, he was so open, he just missed it. He was looking at the shot before he shot it, before he took it in the cross. Exactly what he did. Looked away before the ball got in there. And, and that probably would have been an automatic for a player like Mike Leahy, who scores so often. Coach Masser pleased, though, about the offensive ball work and the fact that they had the opportunity to go for a high percentage shot. He's, he's teaching on the sidelines, though, making sure that they recognize that that frustration is something that's got to be controlled. Sideline. Arrows trying to bring it out. Oh, they I do. Amplo breaks the defensive pressure. Sacker trying to strip it from behind. Pringle also on him. Chris Amplo backing in with a full head of steam. He's got a lot of speed, number 37. And he's doubled right now. The double team. Top of the box shot. That one whistled by Matthewson. Eric Ragone puts it not on cage, and that's been a big factor too, Joe. That some of the shots just have not been accurate so far for Sager. That's true. They're all going wide. A lot of sidearm shots tend to be wide. That was a shot where the goalie might have been screened too, and I'm not sure that Plan or Matthewson would have seen that. Here's Gonzalez. Nice play. Jeff Lazda strips it from behind, and Gonzalez comes and makes a lot of contact with him. Physical play so far in this game from Sachem High School. Luis Gonzalez gets it right back. Here's Eric Ragone on top of the box. He'll settle in. 2.15 and counting. First half. Game all tied. Two apiece. Larry Collins lost it for a moment. Physical play indeed. All kinds of bodies flying all over the place. Dave Metz was hammered on that one for West Genesee. Two-minute mark. Here's Collins. McCallum took a swipe at him, but thought better of it. Gonzalez now top of the box. Feeding Amplo. Shot. Nice Matthewson shot. there to make a great save. That was a whistler. Joe left-handed shot of Matthewson there to up for the task to make the nice play. At least get a cross on it. That was a nice shot and a nice save. Mets the other way after getting hit really hard a moment ago. 
Here is McCall. EJ brings it in, and one more time, just like in the first quarter, lost his footing. I think a look at his shoes or something. That's happened twice in this game. Turnover. Arrows from Degenfelder. The goalie with the ball on his cross. Thinking about a shot, maybe we'll see. He's going to pass off. He'll just dish off to Gonzalez. And they get a timeout call. With a minute eight to go, first half. Joe Amplo, captain, really yelling at the officials. He's had a couple of words to say as he emphatically wanted that timeout call. He's gonna have We're going to go into the careful. huddle now of the Sachem Flaming Arrows and see what head coach Rick Mercurio's got to say to his team. No, nothing magical. It was just a matter of identifying which midfield was out there. He said, we got a minute left, and he asked for a minute. He's, can you do another minute? They said yes. And then he also saw a matchup, and he was just saying that uh, keep looking for those matchups. If they're there, go to the guy. Keep your eyes open and look for the open man. Dan Mathewson, the goalie for West Genesee. First team all county, as we said. The regular season, 75% of the shots he stopped, and that one was a whistler from Amplo, Joe. Low line drive shot, tough to see until it's right on top of you. Yeah, and his, his stick was right there real quick. That was a nice shot and a nice save, as I said. Off the timeout, we'll see exactly what Collins has got in mind. Top of the box, he triggers play. Iso. We are rolling down to one minute, even to go first half. Collins still with it. Collins, bounce shot, goes by Matthewson. Again, not on cage. Good defense from behind by number 33 and Mark Listeja. And quickly off the inbounds, play a score for Gonzalez. I'm not sure if West Genesee was ready for that one, Joe. All of a sudden, it went to Gonzalez left side, and he just whipped it home. Defense was flat footed on that one. You're right. They weren't ready as the ball came in. They just took a quick strut. They probably expected him to work the ball a bit. He didn't do it at all. Just zinged it. As soon as he got it, his cross. Caught everyone on their heels. Let's take a look. As soon as it went in from the end line. It goes right to Luis Gonzalez and Matthewson didn't have a chance. 3-2. Sachem gets it. The lead and the ball off the faceoff one. Coming in, charging again and they'll get the shot just wide by David Kramer. Antonevi makes the backup. That's Antonevi. It was a nice trailing check by Aaron Vecchio to get across on his cross and I think that contributed to him missing the goal. 41 ticks left first half. That pass comes in. Joe Amplo still with it. Thought about a shot, can't trigger one. Anton Evie with it, backing in. Just 30 seconds to go first half, and Sachem, they want another timeout. Yes, they do. Coach Mercurio will stop play. They get three a half, and this is a situation where he sees something as if he were man up for a half a minute. He has an offense for a half a minute. 28 seconds to go. In a couple of moments, we're going to try to check in with Mike Messer's Wildcats, see exactly what he's got in mind for the final 28 ticks of our first half. Coach Messer and Deegan will go right into the huddle. He's going to shoot on the lesson, or you're going to be stepping in front of him if the guy shoots. Excuse me. Excuse me. Come on. He doesn't want us to hear that strategy, I guess. So basically, though, he wants position defense, and that's what he needs. He's got to have somebody stepping in front of the shooter. You can't just let him crank. I think he saw someone sidestep as the shot was being taken. 3-2, Flaming Arrows with the lead. Take a look again at Luis Gonzalez just ripping this shot by Matthewson. Really no chance for Dan Matthewson. As soon as it came to him, he was able to put it home. And there's the tail end of it. Yeah, the shot comes in from the left, your camera left. But the, the ball came in from behind, went right to him, and he just shot it. Didn't even bother to contemplate who it might go to next. He saw an opening, he winged it. So off another timeout from Sachem. Last time it worked very well, obviously. We saw Collins charge in. His shot was wide, and then Gonzalez scoring moments later on a planned play. No question, he 
Land initially to get a shot off. Right, they got long stick midi, Dave Metz. This kid is a sophomore. A lot of people think great things about him. They put him on the shooter to deny him any opportunity with 19 left and running. Collins nice draws it out. Here it comes. He's way up there, way Larry up on the Collins bottom. up top, number 44. Metz on him. Can't get the shot off. Down to eight seconds left. They put one more on. Gonzalez with speed, loses his footing. Down to three seconds. Gonzalez gets it off. Shot there. Bounced wide by Eric Ragone. And that'll do it for the first half. 20 minutes in the books from Coin Field on the campus of Syracuse University. Sachem, the Flaming Arrows, a 3-2 lead over West Jenny. We're back with halftime festivities, highlights, and a look to the second half right after these words. Straight win. Let's look at the halftime highlights. Start off with a goal early on, Joe, from Aaron Vecchio of West Genesee to make it 1-0. This was a cross-crease feed to Aaron, and backside, nobody on him. Quick shot, and he got it right off, and goal. Chris Harnett tied it at one all with a nice move in front. Boy, he was hit from behind, still bats it over Dan Matthewson to tie it at one apiece. 6.38 to go in that quarter. Now, second period, Harvey Sacron comes in, Joe, with a long stick. Exciting play to see a defenseman score. Oh, it is, and nobody picks him up fast enough. They do make the slide, but by then he's got the velocity behind that long cross, and he pops one in. Let's finally get this guy's name right. Lou Antonetti. Pringle falls here, and he keeps his footwork. Pringle tries to stick check from behind. It doesn't do anything, and he scores to put him up. Next up, Luis Gonzalez, number 23. This is just off an inbounds play from the end line, and Dan Matthewson did not see the bouncer coming. A 3-2 game, 53 seconds left in the first half. That's where we stand right now. Take a look at the stop, top stat, 17-5. to five. The Wildcats not shooting, only five goals and a half is remarkable. Saves, Sachin with two, reflective of the number of shots. West Jenny saves five, clears pretty much the same 12 for 14 for Sachem very successful 12 16 West Jenny ground ball Sachem out ground balling or ground balling the Wildcats face offs again Sachem taking those and that's very important man up goals West Jenny one for one second half action coming up right after this from coin field on the campus of Syracuse University <laughs> I feel like I'm the only one who doesn't. Why do I have to be so... Different. 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 Maybe we're not as different as we think. Every Wednesday night on your neighborhood network, Garden... David Kramer on faceoff for Sachem trying to win it. Grab the loose ball. Vecchio all over him. Still no possession. Whistle called. Push called. And that is going to go against the West Jesse Wildcats. West Jenny Joe has not had a lot of calls in this game go their way. No, it's the loose ball push, a little deflections off shots going out of bounds, little things like that that might have gone either way. And a couple checks from behind by Sachem on the Wildcats when they were turning. They were calling them from the front rather than the, the back. Here is Kramer. Comes into the offensive end. Watched by Leshtisha with the long stick, number 33. Joe Amplo, co-captain, top of the box. Duncan is on him. As we saw that shot stat in our halftime highlights and halftime statistics, 17-5. That's a big one. Here's Kramer, big physical player. Not a lot of speed, but really hits hard. And excellent with the ground balls. Chris Amplo on the right wing. Back to Kramer, nearly intercepted by Lestesia. David Kramer goes left-handed shot. That one bounced in front, goes wide. Good backup, though, by Sachem and Chris Harnett, number four. Some of the West Jenny fans thought that perhaps Matthewson was closer. Well, Matthewson put a little spurt on at the end when the Sachem player was jogging to the ball. And I'll tell you one thing, Harnett doesn't want to just 
jog to the ball. He wants to sprint because Harkness almost, I mean, uh, Matheson almost beat him. Here's Gonzalez, scored one of the three goals for the Arrows in the first half. We're gonna stay with our angle from right behind the goal, show you how a play breaks down. Chris Amplo has some space. Amplo with it, thought about a spin move. In front, just kind of chucked a shot up there. Matthewson, easy save. It was a very weak shot, didn't have a lot on it. Flanagan, long stick to Sackrin. He's already scored once in this game. Can he do it again? No, he just dish off for a higher percentage of play to a midi. McCall lost it. Great defense again. What a hit. As Sopra Casa, the All-American captain headed for UMass, hammers Jared Beebe as soon as he got it on his cross. Joe, no chance to keep it in, in play. Comes right there in the sideline. Here's a defender. Makes him turn. And doing so, a nice stick check knocks it out of his cross. Now, Jenny just can't get the ball in the offensive end. You can't remember the last time they... Got a shot off. Still only down 3-2. They've been outplayed certainly in that part of the game in this one so far. Got a problem right here. The two men on the inbounds pass, and then he was all alone running that ball in. That one goes right to Lazda. It comes away as Jenny looks to break out the other way. Dave Metz, long stick. They pass off. They get a goal, Giarusso! Giarusso on the left side scores it. Wildcats tie the game, 8.14 to go. Mike Giruso's first of the day. This is a very subtle move. Giruso gets the pressure, relaxes a bit. The defender relaxes, and then Mike fires off the shot. It was like in two stages. He had pressure, he relaxed, the defender relaxed, and then he took a step, get ahead of the defender, had a free cross, and made the left-handed shot. Tied at three. Giruso on attack. A big goal. 8.14 to go. Third period ties it at three. David Kramer at midfield, Vecchio at midfield, just hacking at it, and comes away. Uh, Sopracasa, who is an excellent player on long stick, hammered from behind. As Beebe tried to make him pay for an earlier play he made against him. Didn't quite work out, though. Joe Amplo in the offensive zone, off the Harnett. And they'll work it back patiently. Try to get their high percentage of plays off again. But they had to wait for Shanahan to come in. That's why that offense backed out. Right. Harnett behind the cage. Has a step on Flanagan. Harnett backs up. Can't get the shot off, though. Nice D by Flanagan it again. It's picked off by Will Campbell. They'll give him that shot all day if there's nothing behind it. Top of the box. Doug Shanahan with it. Number 15. Joe Amplo. On the right side. They can't get their shot off again. Flanagan, nice defense. Sacrum trying to pick it off. Still lose. Matthewson out of his cage. Dangerous play. He's got the ground ball. He's also got a... He's got a full head of steam behind him. He's looking to dish off to a midi. Someone who can control, and he finds Mike Leahy. He had a big basket in that cross, too. Couldn't oh, be yeah. checked out very easily. Nice job by him to come out and grab that ground ball. Don't get this far without being aggressive. Out of your crease, no question. Here's Beebe. Works top of the box. Ben Duncan, a senior. Going to be a Tar Heel next year. He'll be one of the rivals of Syracuse in the future. E.J. McCall, watched by Hansetter. E.J. backs in. Jenny looking to take the lead. Cross crease pass again. Goes right through G. Russo. That was the play they wanted. Shanahan full head of steam the other way. They can't even try to take a hack at him. Nice play from behind. Duncan broke it up. Nice defense. To Leahy, he'll dish back. Dangerous Ooh. play to Matthew said He almost put it in his own net. There's a oh headache boy. for Mike Becerra <laughs> and me. I tell you, I said, oh, I don't Sacrin believe that. works up to G. Russo into the offensive zone. Great hit, good play at midfield. They've just uh, been right there. Sopracasa there to try to make the pickoff. Amplo couldn't find it. Sakran lost it from behind, and looks like the ball's going to go to Sachem. I think players having problems a little bit with the turf in this game. Seems so. Either picking the ball up or the bounces. Seems so, and I don't know why, because all playoff games have been on artificial turf on both upstate and downstate, and I don't know why they're having that much trouble. It's a good point you make. You know, uh, last three games that this Sachem team has played was at Hofstra University. Now, they have a turf surface much like your coin field. That is in Nassau County, not in Suffolk County. So they could play on turf and showcase the event. Loose ball behind. Campbell couldn't find the hold. Still loose. And West Genesee tried to come away with a Pringle. Long stick. This is off of Flanagan. Ryan Flanagan's got a whole lot of space. Backside.
Sacker try to hit someone, make some contact. Lazda, midfield. Nice play, Jeff Lazda to keep it across the midfield line, then lost it. Collins has got it the other way. Larry Collins from the midfield. Number 44, great poke check. Collins still with it, carries in. Around the cage, and they'll set up their offense. Big turnover there. Gonzalez, very quick. He beat beats. Campbell. Campbell in front, can't get the shot off. Great D. Picked off by Collins. Then whips a shot toward the cage, behind the goal, and Matthewson's got it. Oh, this one is going to go right down to the wire. You have that feeling. Lasta at midfield. Trying to scoop by Gonzalez. Jeff Lasta. Russo scored a moment ago. Trying to get an unsettled situation. They just haven't had that chance. Great recovery defense. One more time. E.J. McCall loses it. Nice D. Number two on the play. Mike Luce. Out of bounds it goes. Jenny has got it on offense. Duncan, Vecchio, and Leahy come on at the field. Lazda, along with John Fitzgerald, out. Mark Stevens out. Ben Duncan, top of the box. Four and a half to go, third quarter, game tied. Three all, state championship on the line today. Everybody's got to touch the ball in this sequence. For me, is at least to, to see the Wildcats move that ball around to the success they had. Vecchio's shot was deflected. Degenfelder has not faced a lot of shots in this game, bottom line. That's true. But good backup. Jenny trying to make a quick play. That one top of the box. Vecchio stopped by Degenfelder, picks it off. The All-American goalie has got it. Outlets of the play for Kramer. Broken up, though. Ball still loose. Harnett couldn't find it. And Kramer lost possession. That makes it just a great flick pass to Campbell. What a pass. Campbell carries it, hit from behind. Loose ball, defenseman nice with it. Did they score a goal or not? No crease violation call. Big break. Sopra Casa on long stick coming in, Joe, in the shot, and he was able to beat Matthewson, but they call it crease violation first. And another nice stick check by uh, Ryan Flanagan right here, just before he can get the shot off. Bingo, right there in the force. It, anyway. it was wide anyway. It was wide of the cage anyway. Wouldn't have counted. Some dark clouds. You can feel a stiff breeze now coming in. We may get some rain before the day is over. Here on the SU Hill. Thrilling Class A state championship lacrosse action on your neighborhood network, Cable 13. Time Warner, Cable 13 Sports, proud to bring you this game today. Sacred playing with a long stick. Difficult play. Comes up with a nice ground ball. Sacred charging. He scored once already. Will do it again. Passes this time. Shot one of the the goalie, Degenfelter. That was just a great play, and then Leahy winds and shoots wildly. I'll tell you, Degenfelter, absolutely a tremendous defensive play anticipating off that feed. Leahy shot. Take a look at the sequence. And Sacron feeds behind right there. Nice deflection. Oh, wow. It goes way high. Play. And then Leahy shot. It looked like it was a little spastic, but he had somebody on him, and that's what deflected the shot wide. Back here to Duncan. Jenny working patiently now. They've had good shots. But Degenfelder has come up with two great saves here in the third quarter. Got to move the ball around. It's a cliche ball works for Duncan. Yeah, you need to do that. Ben Duncan, top of the box. Can't get a look. Duncan's still trying. Doesn't take the shot. Leahy thought about it. Wines. Left-handed shot there. Bounces over the cage. Good back up to you, Russo. And Jenny still has it. Tie game, three all. Third quarter. Under three minutes to go, Giarusso on the left wing. Wes Hansetter is on him, long stick, Duncan. Top of the box, so Bracasa is watching him closely on defense. Duncan behind the cage, still has possession. Bees in the far side. Beebe with it, Jared Beebe thought about a shot, couldn't get it off. Acrobatically trying to keep the play alive, so Bracasa comes away with it. Back to the goalie. Rich Degenfelder takes a hit, keeps on going as Giarusso tried to intimidate him, but then throws away the pass intended for Hansetter. Kramer tries to back up on the sideline, runs right into the fence. Great effort by David Kramer, but he couldn't save it from the sideline, Joe. No, it was a nice look on, good athletic move by Degenfelder, and he had a nice idea going to the open man, but his pass just went a little bit too hard. These teams are hustling, no question about it, with so much on the line today. Two minutes, 12 seconds, our third quarter time. Game all knotted up at three head coach mike Maceres, 20th season his assistant bob deegan deegan on the right who has been with him for a long ways of this run 
And a man to whom Mike Messer credits many of the defensive yeah, matchups. Absolutely. It's all it's defense that he works so hard with, and the goalies. And key to today's game, as I said in the open, this is definitely the way it's been played thus far. John Fitzgerald, second line midi out now for Jenny. McCall's been shut down, hasn't scored. Jeff Laz at the top of the box. His pass broken up. Call a good fake, then try to shoot one. Look for G. Russo, two on the pass, out of bounds. We'll see what they call it. It was a deflection first. It was a pass, but deflected by Sachem out of bounds, and Jenny still has possession. West Jenny's got to be patient, and they have to not try to press or attack the goal by themselves, but move the ball around, get the defense to slide, create some open passing and cutting lanes. Minute 38 to go. G. Russo triggers against Hansetter. Mike Giarusso has scored once in this game, second half. He's tied it at three. Jenny led one zip after one, then three straight goals were put in by Sachem. 3-2 score at half, and with a one goal in the third, that's where we stand now, three all. Beebe on the right wing. Roll dodge move. Beebe still with it. Feeds, looks for his man, and they can't quite get a shot off again. Nice pressure defense. Will Matthewson couldn't pull the trigger. Good backside defense it by was. Station. Excellent sliding by the Flaming Arrows. They've so far come up with a good package to stop them. BB backing in, lost it from behind. Nice D again. Doug Longo made the strip with a long stick. He'll dish off for Gonzalez at midfield, lost it for a moment. Last on him. Giarusso tries to stop him as well. And Luis Gonzalez brings into the offensive end. We're 40 seconds away from the end of the third. Here is Eric Ragone on midfield. Will Campbell, who's got Chris Harnett out with him. First line attack. Larry Collins, top of the box, thinking about a shot, spinning. He's got strength, bounce shot there. Stop Matthewson again. Comes away to Flanagan. Nice defense by Jenny. 18 seconds to go in the quarter and counting. Joe, I'm getting nervous. <laughs> <laughs> this one's going to go right down to the wire. You just know it. Zachary. Eight seconds. The midfield line. It's doable. Fitzgerald has still got it. Four seconds. Going to get a shot off. They want possession. He just shoots it. It stopped. Didn't even get to the cage. And that'll do it for three quarters. One more period to go. Will we find out who the 1995 Class A champion is? Or do we need overtime? That's the question. Three, three game. Jenny and Sage. Fourth quarter action coming up right after these words. Fences and the very enterprising crowd. No SRO or a sitting room only, if you will. No question about it. They're on the far hill. Glad they're mowing that these and days. Now they're actually letting even more people on there. As you see, a huge crowd assembled here at Cornfield today. The second game in the Class B matchup, Corning East will play Manhasset from downstate Long Island. Good day for it. Not too hot. A little breeze. And the fans have really turned out, and they have seen a dandy Joe through three quarters. Your thoughts on the fourth and how things will shape up? Well, first of all, the defenses have shined, and the offenses have been frustrated, and that's indicative of the score. My guess is it's going to stay the same. If one team gets a spurt, I think the other team will come back. I think it's going to put down to the wire. You could almost say, who's going to have the ball last? Face-offs are key, and I think that's what's going to dictate the fourth period. This ball hold call against West Tennessee. Turnover will go to Sachem, so the Arrows have the first possession of the fourth quarter. Game is all tied at three. Giruso has scored for West Tennessee, Harvey Sacrin, and Aaron Vecchio. Chris Harned, Lou Antonevi, and Luis Gonzalez have scored so far for the Sachem Flaming Arrows. Face-offs, 8-2. Sachem dominating that stat as well, and they have in shots also, but Dan Matthewson, and the long sticks, defensive middies have been great so far for Jenny in stopping the high percentage shots. We'll see if it shapes up that way here in the fourth as well. Harned has got it. Works for Joe Amplo. Bounce shot there. Matthewson, easy save. He had a good look, Joe. His defensive players cleared out the crease area, and Dan Matthewson not screened at all on that shot. That's a very important point. It's got to happen every time the long sticks are around. They have to be aware of whether the goaltender can see the ball. Sacrin long stick on the far side. Feeds middle of the field. Works it for Stevens. He'll bring it to the offensive end. Game all nice tied. Cut. In front, Lazda is hammered before he could get the shot off. Great cut. And if he had cleanly had that one, he would have been hit hard. 
As it was, he just loses the ball. Joe Amplo brings into the offensive end. Works from Harden on the left wing. That was a great cut. Could have been a shot for Lazda moments ago. Jared Beebe had a wild cross come swinging over there. He got away with what might have been a slash, but had his stick in control and got cross rather than body. Wood and Shanahan coming in and out of the game now. Chris Amplo, watched by Saffron. Right wing, he'll bring right behind the cage. Shanahan and Ragone come on the field. Shanahan off. Antonetti, who scored a crucial goal in the second quarter. Not an offensive player, as he's known. On Pringle again, backing in. Can get another shot off. That one high. And over the cage. Antonetti did not score in any of the playoff games for Sachem this year and comes up with a huge goal today. Harnett now backing in. Chris Harnett watched by Flanagan. Thought about a shot. Throws that pass away. Was it broken up? That's the question. Toward midfield. Who's got it? Kept alive. Sachem, nice job to do it. Checking by West Genesee, but not quite tight enough as they can't cause the turnover. Ragone gets the feed back. Ragone, wrist shot, that one wide. Matthews in there. Who's got it? Nice job, Dan. Matthews in on the backup. Turns it over, and West Jenny's got it. Excellent hustle by the goaltender to jump behind there. He knows that shot has been taken. A lot of people have their backs to the ball. Spins around when he knows it's wide. Goes aggressively to the end line. Seven minutes, 47 seconds to go to decide the Class A champ for 1995. And the folks at Coin Field enjoying every minute of it. Flanagan on the clear attempt far side. Gets it in the offensive zone, Leahy got a step on the defense. Mike Leahy charging in, can get a shot off, no. Passes BB. feeds cross the crease, they can't get a shot off. It went through to Giarusso, then comes away to Duncan. Might have been one pass too many Exactly, there. couldn't get in front for a shot. Duncan top of the box. Jenny looking for some kind of offensive firepower here to come alive, but Hans Setter, who's watching McCall, just shut him down. E.J. McCall lost it, good check from behind. Hans Setter comes away with it again. What a job on defense. McCall hacking at it, but no chance. Long, clearing pass. Dagenfelder. They'll try again in the offensive zone. Kramer does. They'll get it back Give to it David go. Kramer. Shot. That one wide. He had a great opportunity. And Matthewson came up to maybe get a piece. Kramer couldn't believe he missed the cage. That was a nice give and go play. And I tell you, that's the most effective one. And defense comes up to him, but he shoots it wide. You're right. He didn't believe he missed that one. Antonetti triggers play behind the cage. Pringle on him. 6.45 to go in the fourth. Jenny with a great chance to score a moment ago. Even better for Sachem as Kramer missed the cage. Here is Antonetti on Pringle. Using that big frame to back in on him. He's thinking about another shot. Pringle try to push out. He just can't get. He's got too much weight. Bounce shot there. Did it go in? Crease violation. The crease violation. You know what he did? He was leaning and leaning and leaning, forcing Pringle to go to left, then to come back, and he kept pushing enough so he knew he had an inside move, and then when he made that inside move, he had enough angle to get the shot off, but it didn't go in fast enough for him to touch the crease, inside the crease first. One big difference, Joe, we've seen in these two teams is emotional outburst and emotional showing. You know, West Genesee is such a laid calm back. team, yeah. very laid back, and I think Coach Messer teaches that with his players to remain calm-headed, really level-headed as much as possible. We've seen a couple protests of calls from Sachem, and they're just emotional. They really jump up and down and mm -hmm. get into the game more in a different sense. It's uh, reflective of the coach's demeanor. Right. And I, a honestly, different type. Yeah, I honestly believe the West Jenny kids win or lose. They line up in twos, how much time get on the bus and go home. Yep. Leahy. A lot riding on this game. The seniors want to go out as champs. They've all said during the year, doing interviews with them and talking with them, they don't want to be the team that has the streak snapped at 45 in a row. Leahy tried to get a shot off, can't do it. Great D. Vecchio has one goal already. Bounce shot there wide. And the backup by E.J. McCall. 5.50 to go in the fourth. Game tied, 3-3. DiRusso on the left wing around the cage. He's got one goal today. Hansetter has just had a great defensive game. Wesley Hansetter, number 40. DiRusso's got a step, He's got, a beat. He's got a step, a shot off the pipe. He may have gotten the pipe or a save. Let's take a look. Degenfeller, I think they just dodged a big bolt there. Let's take a look, if we can, to Gio Russo. 
charging in. He's got his man beat. Now he gets a shot off and takes a Yep, good save. He Great just jumped save. right out I there. Thought he might have gotten some pipe the way it came off so quickly. He is stepping up to the shot rather than sitting back on his heels. He stepped up and denied the shot. Nice look on his part to get the shot off, though. I'll tell you, that was a pretty, pretty look. Show you how good a defensive team Sachem is, Joe. They allowed 2.9 goals a game in the regular season. That is a phenomenal statistic. Less than three a game. So Jenny really has gone by that already. McCall has been frustrated all day. McCall being hit hard, no call there. In front, Giroux almost got a break, a loose ball. Leahy has got the ground ball on the far side. On center sliding on him. Leahy lost his footing, still got it. We're winding down to five minutes left in the fourth. Ben Duncan, watched by Kramer. Duncan has a look, shot, bounced it wide. Back up by Jenny again, they'll have another chance. I thought a couple times that Sachem had dodged the bullet in terms of getting a hold call. Uh, the most recent one just a few minutes ago. We have seen very little penalty calls. In fact, I'm trying to think how many man-up situations we've got. I think Not more than one, one for one. That was the right. half, the uh, for the half a minute. Yeah. yeah. Giruso left wing. Hot center just pushing him out. Physical player. It's a nice Lost his glove. He's playing without Giruso equipment. Giruso does not have a glove. He's got to get that. Mike Leahy, top of the box. Now, if that ball had come back to Jerusso without the glove, he would have been playing, but not properly equipped, it would have been a procedure violation. Right. So, a lucky break for Jenny that he didn't have it. Feet in the front, Duncan, shot and goal! Ben Duncan! That's the penetration they, they needed to get. They finally get one in the crease and get a good shot, high percentage play. That's the penetration they needed to get. The perimeter was being denied to them. You've got to get somebody open. They stretch the offense, force the defense to stretch. The pass from behind, you're going to see it now. Now it's going to cut over into the open. The defense to spread. There's your man on the crease. Ball in his cross. Quick shot. Take West another Tennessee look at leads it. as Duncan goes high right over the shoulder of Degenfelder, who has been beaten so rarely all season long, and they got the play they wanted. About 10 yards in front, great patient offense, and the pass to get Ben Duncan free for a goal. 4-3, Jenny up. But look out, here come the flaming arrows again. Larry Collins on midfield. The fans from Camillus are going crazy, Joe. They brought their own cheering sections. Kids without shirts, they've got West Tennessee painted on their chests and stomachs face painted here. I'll tell you, it's like a college basketball or football game. It's something. State finals are happening, that's for sure. Antonetti with it. Can he score it again? Backing Watch. in. Top of the box. There's a shot. That one wide again. Put on by Eric Ragone. The matchup that's interesting is on the far side. Antonetti and Pringle. He's given Pringle the move to the left, left, left. And then he feels, and that's when the communication between Pringle and Matthewson's important. Matthewson's got to say, your pipe, which means that he still doesn't have an angle yet. But if you let him go a little bit further, he'll have an inside roll move on you. Three minutes, 54 seconds, standing in between West Genesee and another state title. Eric Ragone, top of the box. Gonzalez around the cage. Chris Amplo. Back to Ragone, who's had a lot of shots, but has not scored in this game. Their big gun is Chris Harnett. He scored the first of the game. Since then, has been pretty much shut down. Antonetti, interesting. He's played a lot more on attack than Chris Amplo and Will Campbell combined here they, in the second half. They floated that pass. We got a flag. flag coming down. Flanning is going to be whistled for it. Is it a hold? Is it a slash? A slash. His question. Cross. Oh, boy. Here we go. Yeah. One minute, man up. His cross came up high. Got him on the face mask. It's going to be a minute. With 3.18 left, I was about to say it's an important sequence. Take a look as he cuts to him. Bingo, you saw it, it turned his head. Very official on the far side, throws the flag. Now, long sticks on the man down come in. Two players you haven't seen action yet today, Joe. Brad Banikowski, Nate Sweet for West Tennessee on long stick. Mike Masters over there talking to Flanagan. Yep. Poke check, poke check, you won't get anything. The minute you came up, you got us into this last situation, Ryan. Man down for Jenny, man up for the arrows. For a minute. Amplo behind the cage. Can they get a high percentage shot off? Well, Better see. believe they're going to try. Collins. West Jenny's in the zone effectively. Works back for Harned. Harned and Gonzalez will play catch on the left side. That's Nettie. They're behind the cage for Harned. Gonzalez thought about it. Here's Collins. We're going. Bounce shot. Why? Matthewson there. He was there to make a stop if he needed to. 2.43 to go. Fourth quarter. There's no way Sachem Play back in action. That one again by Matthewson Wide. And Gonzalez tried that same play 
where he scored right off the inbound pass. With a man up, Sachem should always have a man behind, should not lose the ball after a shot. Here's Chris Amplo. He triggers play. Still have that 60-second slash man up advantage. Flanagan in the box. Gonzalez left side. He's got a goal. Collins lost the handle. Loose balls. Anyone see it? Nate Sweet had a chance at it. Goes to midfield. Still loose. It's released. Really he got it. It's, it's really released. Play. He can get in the box. It's he good. does. Here's Leahy passing. McCall shoots. Save made. Degenfelder. Oh, what an effort by Rich Degenfelder. That's what makes him All-American. There was a, I tell you, was a here break. Here comes Collins. Penalty releases. Flanning it back on the field. Sides even. The drama. Joe Enzel is building still. Antonetti. That would have been a huge, huge goal. McCall scores it. Gonzalez, top of the box. Wine shoots. That one wide. And a backup by Harden. My, oh, my. Now a whistle and a call. Timeout for Sachin. Woo! I tell you, what these players work for all their lives when they first pick up a lacrosse stick, Joe. Those, of course, going on to college will have bigger and better things, but for a lot of these kids, their last game played here today, they dream of being a state championship. And let's take a look again at the great effort on save by Rich Degenfeller, the All-American. The ball denies comes, e. McCall. ball comes loose at the face-off center area. It's loose, a fast break. West Jenny's got numbers in position. He just a beautiful shot, and Degenfelder out there with a save. Shuts down the Wildcats offense. Another look, the draw and dump. He's all open, bounce shot. But Degenfelder steps out there and cuts off the angle, denies the shot. Picture perfect offensive move. You couldn't write it out any better. There are some of the past state champions. Jenny winning in 94. Sachem, as we said, over FM in 93. Ward Melville, a great traditional power. Jenny 87, 90 and 91. And Ward Melville again in 88 and 89. The fans have come out to enjoy this game. <laughs> they, are. they spell out Wildcats on the top of the hill, I'll tell you. Great seats, eh, buddy? English majors, great job. They must be in the front row. No, not quite. They're in the back, back row, actually. The additional seating being allowed here by some of the coin field officials because there have been so many people coming out to watch the games. Sachem's huddle. Off the timeout. Less than two minutes to go. Jenny needs a defensive effort. Try to get the ball back if they can and, and take over on offense and run the clock out. Sachem, of course, has time, plenty of it, to get off their good shots. The goalies have been a huge story in this game. Matthewson has come up big. West Jenny's defense and defensive midfield has been huge as well. As you see, Tom Pringle on long stick. Pringle, a senior, bound for Ithaca, hoping his last game in a Jenny uniform for Mike Masser and Coach Deegan is a championship again. Let's like see the drama unfold, Joe Enzo, with 1.58 to go. Action resumes. Harden on the far side. Gonzalez with it. I like the pringle Antonetti matchup. I think that's going to... That may dictate the flow of the game in a little while. We'll see. Eric Ragone. Works to Chris Amplo. Backing in Amplo, still with it. Lost it for a moment. Left-handed key. It's a word. It's a word. Yeah. Warding off call. Oh, a defense by Saffron. You had it, Joe Angel. You had it nailed. Warding off call on Chris Amplo, and that is a huge turnover. Jenny has got it with a minute 38 to go. That was a tough one, too, because that cross was underneath his arm. Generally speaking, they'll say that's what forced the arm up, but the officials saw it otherwise, and it was a, I thought it was a nice call. Jenny now will try the biggest clear of the season. Ride defense from Sachem's arrows has not been very effective in this game so far. Bringle works to Duncan. They had an aggressive ride in the beginning of the game. Now they're getting back into it. Matthewson doesn't want to lose the ball here with a minute 20 to go. Keep in mind, in high school lacrosse, you do not have to uh, advance the ball within 10 seconds. No time limit. Sakharin across midfield. Mitty back, Mitty back. Wants to dish off to someone with a short stick. He does. McCall's got it. He's being double teamed. McCall with all kinds of speed. Being backed up. Nice play, Duncan. They should have Duncan numbers. with it. Comes into the box. They work to BB. One minute straight up to go. Clock on the field. Jenny with a one-goal lead and the ball. They, they have, hang on. They have to keep it in the box because they have the lead. Leahy. Whistle call. Timeout call. West Jenny, do we have it? Yes. Oh, and they had a Boy, shot. Not, they had know, a they shot. Didn't want that shot. They didn't want the timeout call there. Coach is, coach is shaking his head, and so is Bob Deegan patting him on the shoulder. The players are coming over saying, Coach, my Lord, we had a shot. One of the few times all game. 
It wants to make sure they're on the same page. If this one plays out that West Jenny takes the game, when we get a chance to talk to Mike Masser, we're going to ask him about the discussion in this huddle because his kids came off the field. They had a shot. They saw a goal, and then he had the timeout call, and the officials respond to your coach. So that'll be an interesting dialogue. Take a look at the whole play moments ago. Jenny with the ball, keeping it in the box, as you said, trying to avoid the delay of game. And now they're going to dish off to the crease, or the top of feet to the crease right there. Oh. And there's a shot. He says, no, please, not me. Ben this Duncan could have sealed it. He has so far the go-ahead goal. That would have certainly been the game-winning goal. And the official, Joe, was slow to call the timeout to acknowledge. Mm -hmm. That's why it took so long. I think the well, actual timeout, the verbal timeout, was made a lot earlier, but he took a couple of seconds extra, and all of a sudden, Duncan was wide open. Having been an official in a crowd situation, mm -hmm. when the coach calls timeout, it's one voice among hundreds. And boy, it's awful hard to hear sometimes, especially when it's so intense and close to the end like this. Look at that mob scene at the crease. The call tripped up, lost the ball. It's loose. Penalty flag yeah. dropped late. Boy, is that a big call. Now, a hat thrown on the field. That should be a hat thrown on the field from the Sachem bench. That it is from the coach. That should be another penalty. In the Rick Mercurio, I don't know if anyone has seen it. It's now lying right in front of the penalty box. A technical hold was called. Mercurio did not like the call and chucked his hat in the air. West Genesee has called a timeout. What's amazing to wow. me is that we don't have an illegal team personal action call on the Sachem bench. They should be down two men now because of that outburst by the coach. And he's on the field now. There's no reason he should be on the field because the rules don't allow it. So they should be throwing him a half minute. Rick Mercurio they should is be calling on the him. field. It should be a half minute on him right now. He's protesting the call. There it is. It should be possibly a minute. There, there goes your flag. Yeah. There goes your flag. He, he should have called that well. before. The coach should never have been on the field in the first place. It's an unsportsmanlike. It's going to be a minute this time. Oh, boy. A non-releasable unsportsmanlike. Oh, boy. Now, exactly. let me tell you what we've got here. We've got two men down for the rest of the game. We're going to be one man down because that unreleasable, unsportsmanlike on the coach is one minute. There's 42 seconds left in the game. Sachem is down one. The in-home's in the cage or in the box. Secondly, that half a minute on the technical foul means that they're going to be down two for 30 of the 42 seconds. Wow. Coach is ballistic right now, but his West players got to stay in control. Is sitting pretty with this advantage coming up. Rick Mercurio just lost it. <laughs> and he is still upset as he slaps his hand on the scores table. The in-home should be serving this. And the first in the book probably is going to be Chris Harned, one of their leading scorers. So far, they have got Sopra Casa down on one knee for one of the players, and Harnett is there as the other. And the coach is in that box. It could be another half Boy, minute. He, he is doesn't still care. livid. As Ablo comes off the field, still livid. Chucks his stick, and oh, is he upset? 42 seconds left, and it looks like it's pretty much over. Not yet, because the first penalty on the hold is releasable. What is not releasable? Is that unsportsmanlike by Here's the bench? Duncan with it. Giarusso, they just need to play catch with it. Be careful. Keep Vecchio, it. McCall around the cage. 30 that's, seconds that's now. We've all, we hit the 30-second mark coming up. Sorry, David. That's all they've got to do is keep the ball moving. They need the clock. They don't need the score. Cross crease play. Cross the field lay. He will back it up. You know, I'm happy for seconds. the Wildcats, but what a way for a game to end. McCall. Giarusso. 15 seconds left. The Jenny fans can sense it. There's BB, one penalty releases. Nine seconds left. It's going to be over. Giarusso counts it down. Five seconds left. Duncan with it. It's going to be it. West Tennessee wins. 1995 state champions. a hoop and a holler from Mike Messer. And you never see that. What a mob scene outside the Sachem goal. Hall of Fame coaches get happy too and I'm really happy for both squads. They played one heck of a ball game. Final score, West Jenny four, the Arrows three, and they have
defended their state championship to win their 46th straight game. The ninth state title under Mike Masser. We are back to meet the Time Warner Cable 13 Sports Player of the Game and talk with a winning coach and emotional Mike Masser. 4-3 Jenny wins. We're back after this. Good. It feels really great. A lot of pressure off. Now we can just go home and relax. It's all over. It was a tight game, and the defense needed to come up so big so often. Tell us about the D. The defense just did a great job of playing their man the attack. I think they shut down most of the attack, and they just did a great job. About the last thing you guys want to do is stop the streak. It's 46 now, so you can leave pretty much this year anyway, keeping it intact, right? Yep. We can just stop and just relax and then come back next year and just hope to keep the streak going. All right, tell us about your day in cage. You were tremendous, made a lot of big saves. Let's take you through a couple of highlights. Just describe to us the action you're about to see. Right. Well, this is a fast break for him. Pass it over to 33, I think it is. Went down to the wing, and I just kept on my on the ball the whole way and made the save. Now, again, a low-level angle coming up here, Dan, where you seem to be anticipating and seeing the ball very well. Was your defense sliding well for you so you could see the shot? My defense was staying out of the way the whole game, and they let me see the shots, and that's what made it easier. Made them take the outside shots, and they were just coming at me, and I saw them all the way. All right, Dan, we'll let you get back to the post-game celebration. Congratulations. Dan Matthewson, our Time Warner Cable player of the game, the West Genesee goalie. In a couple of moments, Joe Enzel returns of the head coach, the winning head coach of the state champion West Genesee Wildcats, Mike Masser, right after these words. The Wildcats win an exciting one. I'm joined by head coach Mike Masser. This is in perspiration. Coach just got a dunk from his players. Coach, you got to be happy as a clam. Unbelievable. Just a great, great day. Uh, this group really came from a long ways back. Uh, we had a lot of work to do, and they were willing to really put the time in and listen and, and work hard. And boy, I'll tell you, they've come further than any team we've ever had. Just outstanding that they could, at least at the end, they saw that, you know, that, that the final results of their war hard work and it was right there for them. They just, just were tremendous. Today. Reflecting on you and Bob Deegan to keep them focused and fit for the year. They had uh, almost outmatched in numbers and everything. Yeah, there's no question. Uh, physically, we've been totally outmatched all the time. And most of the time, we are outmatched, even the other years. But this year, especially, outmatched maybe physically, but not up here and not down here. It Believe me. It wasn't a big scoring game, 4-3. But let's take a look at Mike Giarusso's score. That was one of the four that the Wildcats had. Take a look and walk us through it. Yeah, Mike got a fast break uh, uh, run with... Uh, our launch stick, uh, David Metzen just kind of caught him down, going down inside, and Mike just went by him, threw a nice shot, bounce shot in by the goalie. Defense was key today. I thought it might be in the matchup I liked was Antonetti and Pringle. Did they go to him because they thought he was weak? Yeah, they thought he was our weakest defense, and the other guys had so much more experience, but Mike, uh, but uh, Tommy's come so far through the year that they found out that it, he wasn't so weak. And uh, just defensively before the game, we said, hey, no matter what happens, they may be physically better, offense, they may be able to run faster or whatever, but we know we can play defense. The last thing we shouldn't be able to, we shouldn't do is play poor defense. That's our bag. And if we do that, we'll be fine. That's just what happened. And the intangible, Hart, and your kids had it today. Oh, you know it. Coach, you know it. They're great. Congratulations, Coach Thank Mike you. Masser. The upset, the title stays upstate. We'll be back to wrap it up after this. Behind us, and just a great game. MVPs by the game, by the way, the two goalies today, they were just tremendous. Just so like we thought in the open, it might be defensive, even though these teams like to push it up the field and have tremendous offenses. If the defense doesn't come to play, it's not going to be a win for them. 4-3, Bo, what a defensive struggle. No question. Let's check those final numbers again, Joe. Shots, a big key to this game, and ground balls as oh, well. Yeah, no question. 30-16, to 16, Sachem dominated early on as well, and they just continued to dominate throughout the game. Saves even up, clears for the most part. Good success. I don't think they accept the rides work too well, except in the first half for Sachem. Ground ball 2019, almost even. Again, face-offs, a big stat. Sachem cleared up the ball real quick in the middle. They did that with a wing midi with a long stick, and that helped a lot. Drop to the bottom stat penalties. That killed Sachem at the end emotionally and on the field. They were down two men for 30 seconds. 
they were down a man for the 42 seconds left in the end of the game. The coach got frustrated. It was a terrible way to end a tremendous game, but it was a dandy game for everyone, the best ticket in town tonight. No question about it. You knew the way the game was shaping up, Joe, was going to go right down to the wire. Fourth quarter, Ben Duncan gets the game-winning goal, and the defense made it stick. And, of course, the controversy at the end with a hat throwing by the coach, Mercurio, that uh, certainly didn't help Sachin's cause. Well, he was not only that throwing the hat, he was out on the field. Both mm -hmm. are violations. Both are a half minute. But they didn't call a half minute. He got so aggressive that they called a full minute, and that's when the in-home, the attack, first attack in the book, had to sit in the box, too. Great game for West Tennessee. They take it. That'll just about do it for my broadcast partner, Joe Enzel, the entire Cable 13 sports crew. This is Dave Ryan saying so long once again. From Cornfield, our final score this afternoon, West Tennessee, the Class A state champs, have won their 46th straight game. They take it over the Flaming Arrows from Downstate Sachem, 4-3 the final. So long, everybody. Second straight title and ninth state title overall this afternoon, extending their winning streak to 46 games with a win over Sachem in the Class A state final. Sachem would come on strong and take a 3-2 to two halftime lead, but back would come the Wildcats in a fury, tying things at three there. And then the defense. Dan Maskewson on the goal was outstanding between the pipes. And then the game winner. 4-3 is the final. The Wildcats go on to win their ninth state championship. 4-3 over Sachem this afternoon in the Class A final. We get more now from Dave Ryan. Adam, it wasn't without a lot of drama and a lot of excitement. West Genesee's win streak is alive and well at 46 straight as West Jenny takes a victory today, 4-3 over Sachem. The Wildcats had a very close call today with their ninth state title still in the books. It's typical of a big game like this for the defense to come out first, you know, and uh, get your team ignited. And the offense it took a little longer to get going, but come the second half, it gelled and we were ready to go. Coming in the year, I don't know if a lot of people expected us to go this far, but I think uh, with the way that we came into the season, the positive look that we gave everybody, you know, I couldn't ask for anything more. It is tradition, as you just saw in those interviews, for the West Tennessee players to have very unusual haircuts before the championship game, and obviously that tradition paid off again today. West Jenny takes it 4-3 to win their ninth overall state title. At Coin Field, I'm Dave Ryan, Action News Sports. And back, New York state titles for West Tennessee, the Wildcats' ninth crown overall. West Tennessee defends its Class A championship against Long Island Power. Sachem winning a thriller today at Coin Stadium. You kind of knew it would be a thriller, too. West Tennessee also going after its 46th straight victory overall. First half action, Wildcats long stick defender Harvey Sakran won't be stopped. The captain shoots and scores. West Tennessee leads 2-1. But, you know, Sachem's going to respond. Two straight goals before halftime. Lou Antonetti finds the net. The visiting Arrows grab a 3-2 halftime advantage. But the Wildcats' defense dominates the second half. Here's Mike Giarusso on offense, scoring off a feed from Dave Metz. And then the game winner, Ben Duncan, rips home a goal from Eric McCall with four and a half minutes to go. <laughs> West Genesee celebrates another state championship. Super team from Satan. That was a uh, you know, physically uh, outstanding team. They played well. Uh, we just had to hang in there and kept scrappy. We played great defense. And we told the kids before the game, the defense is key. We play great defense. No matter whatever happens, else happens in the game, we know we can play defense. We'll just go with that key and focus on that and let the other things happen along the way. 
to have bring themselves up for so far back. I don't think we, you know, we had to work so much harder. I think we worked hard all the years, but these guys really had to pay attention, really had to listen, had to bring themselves along a lot further than the other teams, and they just did a great job of it. Guess they did. State champion, section three beats section 11, 4-3, West Genesee over Sachem. Championship teams have featured players from West Genesee High. Brad Cotts, John Zilberti, and Charlie Lockwood are among the greatest. Today, West Jenny looked for its 46th straight win and a ninth state championship. The game was played at Coin Field. West Jenny taking on Sachem from Long Island, and this was a nail-biter. The Wildcats down 3-2 in the third when Mike Giarusso breaks ahead of the pack and scores with a left-handed shot. A defensive struggle tied at three going to the four. Then with about four and a half minutes to go. Mike Leahy to E.J. McCall. The quick feed to Ben Duncan. And there's your game winner. West Genesee wins it 
Monica.
Lynn Poster Memorial Trophy, emblematic of excellence and ability, dedication and sportsmanship, who is a former lacrosse coach at Lafayette High School. This Class 8 Memorial Trophy, Gordon Oster, wow. Memorial Award is being presented to the West Tennessee coaches, and congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm getting this one over here too. <laughs> Open, yeah, I'm gonna show Joe here. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> 